Thank you so much, Stacey. This is, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to, to talent and to utilize a platform um, that connects talent seekers um, or, or producers or uh, pros in the industry with, with talent. I, I think it's so important that we are um, connecting the world and um, this platform is um, an opportunity to connect. I don't know where you're all from, right? But maybe somebody is from Australia or somebody is from France. And I know, um, Stacey, you just spoke about where you're from, from Montreal. I'm sitting in my kitchen in Miami. Uh, it's Saturday, so I'm not in my office. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually senior manager of theatrical production for C Celebrity Cruises. What does that mean? I'm kind of in charge of all theatrical productions that we have on board our ships. Um, we have three different productions on each ship and there are about 12 ships um, in the waters right now and we are building more and more and more. You will get a little bit of a taste of what our productions look like. Um, if you have never been on a ship before, sometimes there's a little bit of a stigma. You see a, a ship from far away, it looks small, so you think the theater is small and it's just a small production, but it's um, it's nothing like that. There's actually um, some, some big productions and we are working with the same, um, you know, creative directors and producers that, um, you know, Cirque du Soleil works with, or um, the West End or Broadway, but but you'll see a little more. A little bit about myself. I'm actually from Germany originally. I was born and raised in Germany. Um, I come from a dance background, so I was a professional dancer um, for the longest time, um, and probably exactly like you, you know, did gig by gig, um, did this performance and this performance, and that takes you around the world. Um, I also performed on cruise ships as, as a dancer. You know, you're more a circus artist. Um, I have not been a circus artist. I, you know, through dance, I did my silk act. I, I love the silk performance, which, which kind of carried me a little bit more into the aerial world. Um, yeah, and then it was a, just a very classic um, progression through, through the ranks. You it became dance captain, then eventually a company manager. Um, I performed as long as I could um, because I just loved performing. And um, once, you know, you're getting a little older, I transitioned into choreography. I transitioned then into a show director. I did a lot of show directing um, and then uh, became casting director for Celebrity Cruises um, for about four or five years. I did casting director and now I'm in charge of the operation and um, show creation. So I'm in charge of, I have a team of casting directors. I have, um, I'm in charge of costume department. I'm in charge of new show creation. Um, we have a big studio here in North Miami where we fly our casts um, to the studio to rehearse before they go on the ship. And um, yeah, and it's it's a really fun, fun uh, job. I, I love it. I love being surrounded by performers. I love being surrounded by creatives each day. Um, and I also love, you know, when we do the productions on board the ships. We have beautiful theaters and you will see a little bit more about it um, when Emily shows you the video. We have a little bit of a sizzle reel of what we've done recently. Um, but you you, you um, travel around the world and um, see all those sites and have so much fun. You have a coffee in Rome and then you go back on a ship and do an amazing production. And then the next day you have a coffee. I'm a coffee drinker, so that's why I'm saying that. <laughs> you can have a glass of water, whatever. Um, the next day you're in Barcelona and then you have a coffee in Barcelona and then at night you just come back on the ship and do the production. So it's a, it's a really fun opportunity that um, I enjoyed when I was a performer and I know that our 
um, performance. Really love that as well. But I think we're going to show you a little bit about our productions now. And I don't want to sell um, traveling around the world because that it's just a no-brainer. That's fun, right? But um, what we do is also very important. So hand it over to Emily. Amazing. And actually, she's passing it back to me because we tested this. Okay. And I'm very hopeful that this doesn't get glitchy. And for some of you, if it does, uh, we are putting the link to the YouTube trailer in the chat so that you can grab that for yourselves. But let's have a look here. Bear with me in my super techness. I am going to share screen and play the video. Of course, it's not actually visible. Bear with me again. Advance. Okay, I did test this. Emily will be my, uh, oh, here it is, I think. Yeah. Okay, we got this. I think you're seeing the whole YouTube screen. We're going widescreen. And let's uh, get you back at the beginning. That was my test. Here we go. <laughs> This was a little sizzle reel um, that we put together um, after we launched our newest ship called The Celebrity Beyond. Uh, it's currently traveling from Europe to New York. I'm going to pick her up in, in New York in, in, in two weeks. And these productions are all on, on one ship right now on, on The Beyond. Amazing. So as promised, if that was in any way glitchy, you can grab the link yourself. I have to say, as a casting director, I don't. Often I'm, I'm a long retired from performing, but I still every now and then get the itch and I watch this kind of teaser and I'm just like, ah, so much fun. Okay, it also provoked a lot of questions in my mind that uh, I will start the conversation with, but then as I promised before long, we'll open the floor because we really wanna hear from you and give all of you guys the opportunity to talk directly to Stephanie, who by the way, is delightfully open and transparent. And that's exactly what we want to try to do in these pro talks is inform and support this, this really symbiotic relationship between the people who need the talent and the talent themselves who need the work and want the work and wanna bring their passion to the stage. So I'm really delighted that you're willing to be uh, with us and just so open about the processes and, and whatever level of detail we can mine into. Okay, so I wanna to touch on the, the big one that you'd already brought to the table, Stephanie, which was, is there, indeed uh, a stigma attached to what it means to be a performer on a cruise ship and then more specifically how would you describe the evolution of in your experience say over the last five years even more five plus years because of that weird pandemic window how have things changed and evolved that might actually uh, diminish that stigma yes so i think um shows or production shows, big theatrical productions on cruise lines are quite new in the industry. Um, it, it started, I think in the eighties, there was a um, producer, her name's Jean and Ryan. Um, and she, she started, she had that idea to 
instead of just flying on some performers. And back in the, I think in the eighties, there was just the music groups that came on and entertained a little bit and guests or passengers were not that picky about entertainment either. I mean, the, the audience has changed a little bit, right? Everybody expects something big and a big experience nowadays everywhere you go. Um, but there was a woman in the 80s that then said, how about we're going to bring on some dancers and make it a little bit more of a one hour production. And I think that evolved um, throughout the 90s and evolved more and more. But while you had, um, you know, Broadway putting up big productions, Vegas putting up big productions, cruise ships still had small stages. So I think this whole entertainment industry on cruise ships is just much newer than you have that on, on, on land. Um, now, um, it, because the demand grew and grew, and I keep asking our, um, our cruise line, we, are, we keep building cruise ships, where, where do where do the people come from? Where is our audience? I mean, they're more and more in, in every cruise line keeps building cruise ships, but they have research and they they um, they 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 did all the you know data, which is what they are hired for. So they they say that there are so millions of millions of people that were not cruising but would want to cruise. They're a perfect clientele. And um, this is the perfect um, uh, destination for for um, for guests or you know international guests. And um, now this this industry has evolved from going from port to port to offering um, an experience on board as well. And the experience on board was culinary for a long time. But people are getting, okay, good food. You can get good food everywhere in the world, although it's getting more and more expensive. I went to dinner last night, I could not believe it. But um, you, you can get good food everywhere, but you just, people are craving an experience. They go to Las Vegas, they go to Broadway. It's, it's so approachable nowadays to everyone. So bringing guests on board and not having an experience is just not an option anymore. And then there's a lot of competition now, you know, there's um, some cruise lines offer um, full Broadway book shows where they bring in Broadway on board. Um, and when Broadway comes on board, that was like 10 or 15 years ago when they're slowly starting those book shows. When those producers come on board, they want the same standards as they are used to on Broadway. Or when I, you know, hire some, some people that work for Cirque du Soleil. They're the same standards that they are used to and they're demanding. So I think that both industries now, because we are trying to bring experiences that are more land-based on board, and that started about like 10 years ago. Um, I, I, I think the difference between these productions are becoming less and less if, you know, if not, I almost feel like they're the, they're the same or sometimes on cruise lines, they're, they're very elevated um, compared to what I see on a theater on land. Um, there is, we're quite lucky. There is some, sometimes corporate America and entertainment clashes, but as a performer, I never understood, but you do, entertainment needs to be um, supported by somebody that that produces it right and that costs a lot of money and because corporate america um has owns these cruise ships or that i'm working for the cruise line there's a lot of support there's a lot of money there's a lot of funds going into these productions um we don't have to sell tickets um because the entertainment department doesn't have to sell tickets that's all done by our guests they are buying tickets so so, but, but why are they buying tickets? They're buying tickets because of these amazing experiences that we offer. Everybody travels around the world, every ship travels around the world, but you know, who is offering these fantastic experiences? 
And that's where the competition starts. Um, that's where we have to elevate more and more and more and more. And that's why if we are becoming bigger and bigger and uh, we can offer better productions every, every day. Um, there was this weird um, time warp. I think you described this, Stacey, the, the COVID one. It's like those two years are almost gone. Um, it's a little bit difficult to now ramp up again, but we are, we are doing it and we're um, really excited about it as well. Amazing. Okay, so you touched on something really important, I think, which is not being apologetic for the fact that this is commercially supported work. And I think, uh, I know I personally am a big advocate of all genres, all sectors of performing arts, and that includes circus arts, meaning there is a place for all kinds of work. And then there's also very much uh, the, the benefit of just doing what you love as your job. And I feel like that's where this connection is so strong with the, the kind of productions you're describing that are financially supported. And I think it's important that we not be apologetic for that. We should really celebrate it actually and support the fact that these opportunities of uh, performing for audiences that might otherwise not have been the ones to go into a theater or attend a circus show are suddenly becoming exposed to things that they might really fall in love with, which ultimately I think sort of permeates into the broader ecosystem of performing arts. So we're talking about this cruise ship um, demographic, which as I understand it from you, Stephanie, is evolving and expanding and growing. And there's still many, many millions more who are in that space, in that same demographic who have yet to get on board, but it seems like the cruise ship lines are banking on it. Yes, and um, we we have as performing artists or people that work in the industry. I think our duty is to to evolve performing arts and make sure it is being handed over to the next generation. That people are being passionate. The next generation is passionate about it. Is going into the performing arts and is carrying it forward and forward and forward. Um, I think that's our duty to evolve it and evolve it. And that's what all generations have done. And we have been inspired by somebody that there was probably one person that brought us into this industry. And that's why we are so passionate about it. And then we can pay it forward as well. And um, it, it, I, I think it is important to step out of ne your, your niche and, and, touch a mainstream audience, touch people and 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 inspire people. And um, on on cruise ships, for example, people go on vacation. So they don't really, I mean, buy that one ticket to that one show that they really wanted to see, but they go to the show and think, oh wow, I've never ever first of all expected this but secondly been exposed to this as Stacy mentioned and um and then they 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 get to know you and and that opens up another world for for everyone what would you say in the way if you can broad stroke this uh what percentage of circus artists do you have across all of the shows as it relates to other types of performers oh we have uh, about one, I uh, would one quarter of our cast is a circus artist. We our cast um, consists of singers, um, dancers, and circus artists. Um, so, if I think the the last cast that I saw yesterday, for example, there were eight dancers, um, four singers, and four circus artists. And we are treating our productions a little bit more like a um, contemporary circus. Uh, so we involve, you know, the, the circus artists don't come on, do their act and leave. They do come on, they're interwoven into the production. When we bring them into our studios, for example, we, we do um, you utilize their skill set, but direct them so that they really fit into the production and um, are part of the cast, as opposed to doing your traditional act. You come with music and you know choreography. You do the act and then you leave the stage. 
I'm going to ask one or two more questions and then I really do uh, plan to open the floor so that we can get into some specifics. But I'd like first to ask, in a general sense, what kind of profiles are you most commonly looking for? Um, hand balancer. They do need hand balancers that um, also can do aerial. So there is always one main act, but we always need a secondary act that they can do as well. Um, and then dual aerial acts um, that do, you know, you saw a lot of strap um, in this video. <laughs> I mean, that that was, we also have a lot of silk and, and other aerial disciplines, but um, dual aerial acts, um, uh, single ones as well, actually. Um, but they always have to have like something secondary. Like, can you do aerial and, and the hula hoop? Or can you do aerial and and dance? Um, there, there's always something more that we are looking for, and then we are utilizing that skill set and and direct it and um, choreograph it into the show. Great. Now I'm going to dive into a very practical thing. I promise, folks, this is my last one, but hopefully it's even almost on the tip of your tongue. How? How does this happen? What does an artist need to do exactly to get? seen and become known by you and your team? We, um, well, we work a lot with, with agents, um, with, with um, acrobats agents that, um, that put them forward. We have um, pre-COVID, and we are now starting this again, um, done auditions and that, that's always a little bit hard for everyone to get there to get to the audition but we did an audition in Montreal we did an audition in Orlando we did an audition in, in, in Paris so there is there is auditions around the world um, that we are holding and I, I love to see people in person I, I'd rather do that than having an online submissions um, and then we also go to circus festivals um, and, and, and like, like to see, as, as I said, I would like to see people or, or not just me, but my casting team. We, we like that personal touch that is very important um, to us as well. Um, if we, there is also just that online submission, there's an email address. We have a website and an email address. If, you, if we can't see you in person or if you don't have an agent, not a problem just submit to this email address and then um, we we can go from there um, usually when we like the skill set and we we like what we see what we like your your show reel um, then we set up a zoom meeting or an, a video meeting just so we see the person because we we hire skill set um, and but we the performance the person is very important to us as well because you, you know, you work as a team. You're part of our team. We are personable. We're. I like to get to know every single person, and we work as a team. And that that's just really important to me to hire nice people, kind, performing, and um, show creation can get stressful sometimes. So you know, we just have to work, be able to work together. Beautiful. I love that. And that that is under the auspices of, of me wearing my casting director hat. I think the human behind the artist is so crucially important. And it sometimes feels, I think, in the process of applying that you're not necessarily seen outside of what's in your demo video. But I'm loving what you're expressing. And I think it's really important for everybody listening to know, in fact, this whole this whole team concept and the whole notion of wanting you to succeed and be a part of something positive. We know our industry comes with rejection occasionally and things that don't work out, whether it's profile type, skill set, discipline, specialty, timing, a million and one reasons why things may not work out the first time. But what is never changing is the fact that you as a good person, as a generous team member, as a someone who, who is um, simply a good person and with a great reputation, that will hold and that will bridge those gaps and really start to matter when the opportunity does present and suddenly you're the best fit. 
let's get some hands up in the air. Does anybody want to break the ice and uh, ask Stephanie a question of your own? All right, Sharon. If you are able to come off or come into video, whatever that is exactly, come off of your blank name, you're welcome to do so. Hi, uh, I'm trying. <laughs> um, I, one second, I'm, I don't really use this a lot, so I'm, I'm trying, but um, anyways, I, hi, well, first of all, I want to say thank you for having this um, talk. I think it's very helpful for artists, and I'm sorry if my connection's a little bit funky, but I'm on tour, so we're in like a, at an RV park. But anyways, my, my question is a little bit maybe complicated, I would like to know what Stephanie has to say about, it's kind of known in the circus world that people often get chosen for jobs, especially at, in the cruise ships because they know somebody else. So I would like, I know it's a little bit, I wanna hear like how true she thinks it is. And if it's a thing, like, is it because you think that you would trust like other artists like words because they know like, their friends and like their work and everything like and it's a little bit polemic <laughs> but I it's like a, it's a thing that it's often mentioned so I would like to hear it from like from the top <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's interesting um feedback I didn't hear this before but it, it's good to know that that this is a, a reputation um that that is out there um I don't believe in that. Um, for for us, um, I believe in in hiring new talent. I love going to um, you know the circus schools and to their final exams and see who's out there for for myself and um, you know and and hire somebody that I don't know um, or I want to get to know, obviously. Um, but what you're touching on is is something that might however still be common in the performance in the industry in the entertainment industry because the net network is so small that people talk and you do have a certain reputation and i do know the you know i talked to pavel um Kata from cirque du soleil and and you know he he says hey this the, we talk about artists um, so a reputation is quite important, and yes, we, we're we're talking about who um, you know is out there, and and um, if if this person can be recommended or not. So I wouldn't say that this doesn't happen, um, but at the same time, we are looking for new talent, and you do get a job if you don't know anyone in the industry as well if you if your skill set and your personality and everything speaks for itself um then and you're the right person for the the gig then you're the right person for the gig it doesn't matter if you know anyone or if you do know someone thanks stephanie i'm gonna add something because i i i feel like it's a yes and situation Yes, we do know that that can happen and does happen. It can be a little bit about who you know, but if we reframe that into the best possible way, that's an invitation to network and make yourself known and develop and strengthen your own personal relationships and reputation so that you feel like you are getting yourself into the game. And I mention this simply because that's so much of what's at the heart of Circus Talk as a platform. We want this to be an even playing field and so we invite in as many people as possible so that we don't get insular about this. It can happen, but how great to hear directly that it's not just about that, not by any measure. All right. I think that's a great point. Too. I like it's an, an invitation to get better at networking. So that's a great way to put it. Thank you, Stacey. <laughs> All right, who else has a question? I know there are some. All right, uh, Justin, go for it. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Stephanie, uh, for the talk. Um, yeah, I was wondering like how long contracts usually are for your company and maybe for cruise ships in general. Um, and, and also like another aspect and another um, side question is that uh, like as far as bringing families along, 
Um, I just had a baby girl. She's right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so just thinking about the practical um, aspect of bringing families along um, and yeah, just, and also, also curious about other performers, how they deal with, um, I don't know, just leaving your home for a while and coming back to your friends later. Um, just if there's any stories you've heard about that um, could be really interesting. Yeah, so congratulations on your baby. So Thank cute. You. And I love that she's he or she. Yeah, she, Fiona. She is part of Circus Talk, Stacey. She's probably yeah. the youngest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, contracts on board are about six months. Um, so give or, give or take, depending mm -hmm. where we would sign you off and, you know, if the ship happens to be at the perfect sign of port, but it's about six months. And um, we fly you to Miami prior. So there is a, a rehearsal process for about, the, I would say, four weeks for, for circus artists. Um, the dancers and singers are um, in rehearsals a little longer, um, it's more material, but it's about four weeks. Um, in, in Miami, when, when you're here rehearsing, I, I do see a lot of, um, people that have their friends or their family come and visit because you're just in Miami the whole time, right? Um, on, on board, uh, you, you have a cabin, um, and there are opportunities to sign on people. That's what we call it. You, you can sign on and there's a friends and family where you just um, are being char charged a fee, like a minimal fee for, I think it's port charges and, you know, something else. But, um, but then you, you can sign on friends or you can sign on families and um, for kids I, I do think there is a minimal age um because you know liability reasons but um I, I think there are opportunities oh cool. thank you thanks Justin uh as for your other question you know hey start a conversation about that I think it's an important one kind of um sidebar but yeah the life the potentially nomadic touring coming and going subletting your apartment kind of life is a, a very real topic of discussion and probably something that um in different contexts a lot of people would like to engage in that conversation so you could jump on that use the platform post something and solicit feedback great thank you <laughs> All right, another hand. Brittany, go for it. Uh, hi, uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having this, uh, this talk. It's really interesting to hear. Uh, I was just curious about what's currently in, like Stephanie mentioned that like, for example, like we like it's male hand balance are, are really needed right now. Like, I'm just wondering about expectations. Like as an aerialist, are you expecting a female aerialist like to definitely have a straps number or to definitely be able to do tissue or like, are there expectations for like female or male aerialists and then as well like ground acrobats? Yes and yes and no. <laughs> we have, um, the, the good thing about, about our, our ships, we have, um, three, so our guests are on board for a week or 10 days, right? And they are, um, they, they are staying, but we have to entertain them every single night with completely different entertainment, different shows. Yeah. So we do have on board, we have different shows. Um, and on every single ship, the shows are different. So we have about 33 shows, different shows that are, on our fleet right now. So if I say, yeah, we need a male hand balancer, this is for certain ships. But if I, if, you know, if you're an aerialist, aerialist the female aerialist, we, we do need female aerialists for, for other ships. So we have so many different openings because there are so many different diverse shows and we have a different show package. And on, on some ships, we even have two casts on board. 
So there we have different venues. So one cast is doing the more immersive um, show and the other cast is doing the theater show and we need different aerialists or acrobats for these shows. Um, there are, um, sometimes we just need an aerialist and we are open to the skill set. We say, okay, we need an aerialist that is um, female or, and, and more sensual and, you know, with, with this movement quality, but is it strap, silk or lira or um, we can still work with that. You just need to have, bring that quality. So we would bring you to rehearsals and see, you know, our, our coaches would say, you know, we need this quality but the skill set, then we we work with you. So there's a little bit of a give and take. Um, we have set productions, but then you come in as an artist, work with our directorial team and our coaches, and then we kind we, we move. We almost meet in the middle because everything is live. It's not like set. Um, everything is live and we are working with the new casts and every production with a new cast is a new production that we are putting together. So I'm not sure if I answered your question, but there's a little bit of yes and no. There's just a little bit of a gray line, but we are not like stuck in our ways and this is what we need and this is who you have to be and you don't have to, you know, be exactly the person that was in the track before you. Maybe I'll put uh, Brittany on the spot just a little bit. You're a rope artist. Yeah. How, how would you present yourself to Stephanie, knowing what you've just heard and what we've been talking about today? In a, in a submission scenario, how would you present yourself? Uh, I would present myself as an aerial rope specialist, but I would also, actually this morning, I was just called a chameleon. So someone who can adapt to kind of everything. But that doesn't mean I necessarily have the demo for everything. And this is kind of what I'm struggling with is like recently I've been asked, okay, like, can you do hoop? And it's like, yeah, of course I can do hoop. Oh, send us a demo. And it's like, well, I don't necessarily have a demo, but like I said, I was considered a chameleon. But at the same time, like I would also consider myself a ground acrobat. Like I'm also in a duo, we have a dual serial act. Um, and then I can also do, we're also both dancers and acrobats. So I would say like, I'm a generalist, but also a specialist specifically with rope. It, it is hard to come a, um, to get that across through a casting agent if you don't have the demo, right? Yeah. If, if we are in a in a like an audition setting and you and I were in, in a room, I would say, oh, can you, you know, can you work five minutes on a lira together with our our acrobat, um, our coach, and then um we would work together and then we can just you know find your spot together and your opening together but if you are far away um and you only have a demo it's really difficult to to get that across unless and and Stacey actually that we haven't talked about that we've done this before unless we are doing a live zoom audition which is something that that I would actually if there is a casting agent or if I were interested in your skill set because you it, it seems like there's a lot to offer you have a, a duo act you have a solo act you, you're dancers um a, a chameleon is definitely something that we are very interested in um but i think if the casting agent doesn't offer that or doesn't have the idea to say hey let's do a zoom live zoom audition I think you should say, hey, I have so much to offer. I don't have everything on, on a, a video right now, but how about I can zoom you into a studio and I show you. Yeah, that's super interesting. And just a question about demos in that case, like, uh, like it's a question of like, what would be more interesting to you? Like, would you like to see, for example, a, like a high level aerial rope demo, or would you like to see, for example, 45 seconds of many disciplines in one? Like, <laughs> I like to see what you have to offer first. So the, the 45 seconds of every single thing you offer, 
is very interesting, but I usually always ask for a one number, one high level number, because we, I, I have to, it's so easy to splice something together and I still don't know exactly what performance quality you have. But if I see you do one full act, like a two minute, three minute high level act, then I really see that, that quality, how you, Good. your transitions transitions are so important to me whereas like the 45 second um sizzle reel doesn't really show you tra your transitions right how you get into it how you get out of it how you do get on stage off stage all, all of that is really important so i think that's what you can see when you when you show me a, a full number um but that's usually my my second ask First, I, I see everything you can do. And I'm like, hey, do you have a full number? I would, if I were you, I would, I would send this both to me. This is my little sizzle wheel. This is all I can do. And this is one full number. And then um, I, I, can, I can see what you have to offer. Amazing. Before I jump to Michael, I'll just really reinforce what Stephanie's saying. This is like golden nugget material make every effort to answer the questions before we have to ask them. So if you've got different videos and they are by design more of a sizzle versus a more complete number, name it accordingly and make sure that this super important calling card is what you are sharing. Don't hold back. And I would go so far as to say, also remember that that video is everything in the absence of a live interaction, at least that sort of first taste test. So if that means making a commitment to getting into the studio to grab just a few minutes of movement abilities and skills on those secondary apparatus, it doesn't have to be show quality stuff. It doesn't have to be high production value. It can be you in your training clothes, just giving us a sense of what's in the toolkit. So nice to have the full act, obligatory pretty much, um, but really great to have this complimentary stuff as well, even if it's out of context, not on stage. Michael, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you so much. Greetings from Germany. Good old Germany. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So um, I want to hop on um, the, the demo video. You, you kind of um, um, explained nearly everything I wanted to ask, um, but I'm a, I'm a Chameleon myself, I'm not an art, I'm not an acrobat, I'm a magician and singer too. So that's something I, I struggle with to explain to a custom department because you are a magician, check, or you are a singer. So this combination is unusual and um, I'm a physical comedian too. So combining um, mime and, and vaudeville juggling stuff. So that's hard to explain to a casting department and you kind of explained it with the different videos, but um, maybe the, the right one will be a sizzle wheel and one number, but what should it be? <laughs> Do you want to see a, a, um, a singing package you, you provide maybe, or do you want a full um, magic number? What do you want to see? That This is... This sounds incredible that you have so many, so many skill sets and a magician. The, 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 the first thing that I, that I'm thinking is how would I recast you? Because when I hire you and you can sing and do magic and all of that all together, how do I recast that position? It seems like you have a very, very unique, unique um, skill set. And I would want to see something that where you combine um, magic, you know, your, your vocal ability and in, in your presentation skills in, in one. Um, and then for me, I, instead of um, hiring you as a specialty act, I would think, you know what, I have, as I said, every day the theater it will is never dark. Our theater is never dark. On twelve ships, every single every single night, every single day of the year for for years and years and years, never a dark night. So we have to offer more and more and more and more entertainment. Plus, we have other venues where we have to offer entertainment. So I would think, you know what, yours is so specialized 
do you have an act? Do you have your own act? Um, five minutes, 10 minutes, or do you have a show? And if you do, then, then show me the video. And then um, I, would, I would see if there is an opportunity for you to perform on in a variety show on, on one of our stages. Um, if I have for the production shows within the cast, I would either hire a magician or a vocalist. I don't, I don't think I have, I have a, a, a track um, that combines both because that's very unique, right? And how would I recast that track? So that's too unique to a production show. So I would place you in a variety show. Or if you just if you want to be hired as a vocalist, then I need a vocal reel. And if you want to be hired as a um, you know magician, then I would need a magician reel. Um, so to answer your question, I would and and piggybacking on what Stacy said, I would I would um, send one reel that is um, combining everything. If you have that, if you have a your own act and your own show, send that, and then just the vocal one and just the magic one so that it, as a casting director we can say oh I need a magician he's perfect he can do magic and then or I need a show uh, I need a 10 minute show it, he's perfect he can do magic vocalist he can do everything so I'm just gonna hire him for, for the variety show because we don't I mean uh, every casting director is different but my brain goes, we have 33 different shows, but we also have different stages in different venues. So we need constant entertainment and I would try to place you, um, you know, wherever you, you would fit. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's keep going. We have uh, just about five minutes before I'll, I'll pull us in for a bit of a wrap up. So who else has a question to put on the floor? Holly. Hi, sorry, I can't have my video on right now. Um, but I had a question about very specific apparatus. Um, so recently I've been training a lot on aerial spiral and I wondered how you would feel about hiring an equipment like this because of that issue of recasting and such. Um, so I wonder what your thoughts would be on that. We have that on board. Oh. we have that on board yes and i love it i think it's so beautiful me too um i i just really obsessed with it and there's a lot you can do with with lighting and costumes that that create a special effect um so, so we have that on board for sure and um yeah, i'm yeah i'm obsessed um but for special apparatuses the same thing if this is your passion and this is your act send that act but is there, I mean, if you can do aerial spiral, then you can do a Lyra act, right? Or you can do, so what, what, what else can you offer? So we can um, hire you for the specialized mm -hmm. skill set, but I'm also more, you know, more of you into the rest of the show. Okay, that's amazing to know. Thank you. Sarah. Hi, um, I also can't have my video on right now, but um, thank you. Um, so I also had a kind of specific apparatus question. Um, I'm a tight wire walker as well as an aerialist. And I have noticed that wire in the, so far that I've seen has not really been represented on ships. Um, although I know it's been done, I just wanted to know, um, I've seen Slackline recently, but is that something that you have or you know others are interested in? I don't have that. Um, I I do know if, if you send me that um, a video of that skill set, I would send it to my colleagues of Royal Caribbean, and because I know that they have that and they are looking for it. So 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 that's the industry is so small. If I see that, I would I would go to JP, who is the director of um, casting at Royal Caribbean, and say, hey. You, you need that skill set, I, I know. So I would pass it on, um, but we don't have it. However, if we, if I see something that is really interesting, um, right now we're, I have a five-year plan for the rest of the, you know, to um, 
to replace all production shows and to create new production shows. And we also will create new ones for new ships that we are building. So whenever I see a specialized skill set or a great apparatus that I've not seen before or that has not been performed on board of any cruise ship, I'll go, you know what? We got to do this. We have to do this for the, the next new show that we are producing. Um, so I'm always so thankful when, um, when a performer sends me something I've never seen before or that has not been done on a cruise ship because I would love, we would love to be the first ones that introduce this to the cruise industry. Great. That is the optimistic answer I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And, and maybe just a reinforcement of how, just as a general rule, the very best people in this industry want you to succeed. So this notion of having your material passed forward to industry peers, uh, knowing that, yes, there is a bit of that good version of who you know, this is the best version of that, right? This is someone who's uh, appreciating what you've got, not quite the right fit for their casting need, but the generosity of passing it forward for me is so illustrative of the amazing people in this industry. Let's go with one more. I think that's maybe all we have time for, maybe two if we can squeak it in. Justin. Oh yeah, I just wanted to touch on the same question, but with like jugglers and object manipulation, um, I do yo-yo performance. So um, just how often would you have something that in a production show versus a variety show? Um, Right now, we don't have any jugglers in the production show, but we have that in the variety show. Um, so, yes, yes, and, and no, not in the, the ones that are being rehearsed in Miami, but um, the ones that are on put on board the ships. Yes, we have that skill set as well. Got it. Thank you. And, and have you done this on a rocky ship? <laughs> um, not yet, but life is rocky, I think. <laughs> There's definitely ways. <laughs> nice. All right, let's try to squeeze one more in. Anybody have something they want to throw at us before we begin the conclusion chapter? Oh my God, all the hands going up. Okay, so now we're we're back to back. We'll try to fit it in if if Stephanie, we can squeeze a couple extra minutes. Yeah. Um, let's jump in with summer and then Brittany, and then I will start our closure. Hi, so I'm um, in the middle of driving right now, so I don't have my video on, but um, this conversation is just really enlightening and um, I, I am appreciative of all this uh, really helpful information for casting. Um, the one thing that I was curious about, because I know, um, in my experience, I've, I've seen two different versions of like cruise ship performance opportunities. And I guess specifically with like uh, celebrity, do you, you have your tracks that are the productions that you create? Do you often, do you ever bring in like somebody who has a 45 minute show like guest? Like I know there's guest artists that will come on to cruise ship and they come with a with a full show. Um, do you do you ever have that sort of work, or what what experience do you have, or information you might be able to share about that? Yes, we do. We 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 have that work. Um, we are bringing on guest artists um, constantly on board of our ships. Our our cast that is a resident cast on board. They they are covering three nights, you know, three to four nights out of a seven day cruise. Um, the other nights are being covered by guest entertainers. They typically have a 45 minute show and they're, they're performing this show twice a night, usually a, like a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock slot. Um, and, and yes, we are constantly looking for something different. You know, how can we elevate this program? Um, it, it doesn't, a lot of them are vocalists, a lot of them are magicians as well, but is there anything else that that um, people can offer? And we actually hiring um, acrobats as well that have a 45 minute show um, come on board, they do their 45 minute show and um, then they get off. So yes, 
for sure we're, we're I think us celebrity cruises, but um, every cruise line has, has these um, opportunities. Um, I have one, that's awesome. Um, that's, uh, I have one other question, I guess piggybacked on that is, and that would be in terms of like what, what you for the submission process would like to see from somebody who wanted to present a 45 minute show for your, um, for the, for the, your cruises. Um, is a sizzle wheel, um, so so we see if we are interested or not, and then the the full show. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Of course. Don might. All right, Brittany. Let's take our last question for Stephanie. Uh, it's just a question about social media. Uh, how important is a social media profile to the casting of a cruise ship line, for example? And also, does casting ever take place because of social media, like Instagram, for example? Yes, so very important question. I, I'm glad actually we're, we're touching on this. Um, we Social media became a great casting tool. Um, it, it, the, the platform that it's, it's, a, it's a free casting tool that is an opportunity for you to show your skill set and who you are to the world if your if your account is not private and um it's very important to keep a very professional um social media account if your account is, is public and if you're using that as a casting tool if um if i look if you send me a sizzle wheel or a submission and you would like to if you're interested in an opportunity with celebrity cruises a lot of times my team looks up the name on social media um and you know just checks because a lot of times you have a social media profile that is you know that, that features your skill set and they're looking for um what what else do you do or oh, is there anything on social media that you haven't showed us or it's not on your email um and uh it's it's a very very helpful tool um a, a lot of times we also there is an urgent casting notice we need a specialty artist for a certain ship i don't know I, i'm using the hand balancer um you know example again we we need a hand balance on board very quickly and then the hashtag hand balancer just shows me all the hand balancers around the world and it can be a very quick quick tool um which becomes a very quick casting tool yeah oh that's good to know thank you folks we are over time already and i want to thank stephanie for being so so generous um it would be remiss of me not to add that the platform of circus talk is very much in that same category make sure your profiles are very very up to date that you have populated all the new fields that have been recently added in these last months it is yet another tool in the toolkit for a lot of casting directors so i'm preaching to the choir because so many of you are with us already but it's really important that your profiles are totally up to date because as Stephanie pointed out, sometimes calls can be pretty urgent and we want answers really fast at our fingertips. And that includes your most recent material. So deep thanks, Stephanie, you've been amazing. Um, I do wanna make one quick sort of housekeeping -ish thing as we close. So first of all, you'll recall that this link uh, will get sent out to everybody that registered. So it's a, a great reference and there's been some terrific practical knowledge and, and great nuggets shared. As a parting comment, uh, in the chat, we are putting a link to the Members Voice Award. And this is totally not related, but entirely related to our industry. And I would invite each of you to jump into this space. It is a Google form where you can make a nomination of an artist you feel deserves to be um, under the spotlight. And this is in association with the Circus Ring of Fame. So have a look at that link. If there's someone in your world that you feel is worthy, and I bet you there's a lot of them, uh, give it some thought and we would invite you to nominate an artist. Stephanie, thank you. You've been amazing. And thanks each of you for your great questions and just for being here. Any parting comment from Stephanie? 
thank you, Stacy. As as you know, I'm I'm a big fan of what you do and um, the, the world that you are bringing together through Circus Talk and and everything you do. So I'm thankful for every opportunity where I can connect with artists and um, with the industry. And I, I love this platform. So thank you for having me here. And uh, if you have any more questions, let me know. Um, look me up on uh, on social, for example, on, on Instagram. I, I answer everything you, you need to know and love to stay in touch. Amazing. Thank you also to Emily, our community manager at Circus Talk. Thanks to all of you. Grab the link in the okay. chat over and out. We'll see you again in December when we're back with another Pro Talk. Thanks, Thank you. So much. Thank you. Bye.